What do you want Congress to do when it comes to the eviction moratorium? I mean, what can immediately help people like the couple we just heard from who had experienced homelessness, secured housing, and are now on the brink of losing it again? Alicia, you point out, um, and the woman in the interview tells a story that is very common right now in the United States. We have millions of people who are on the brink of eviction in some states. Uh, evictions are already being filed. And as soon as that moratorium is done, that's it. People are going to get uh, thrown out. They're going to get kicked to the curb. Folks are going to be homeless or they're going to be doubling up. Uh, they're going to be scrambling. So what we need to do is that uh, Senate Republicans need to uh, pass the HEROES Act or a version of that that puts significant investment in direct rental assistance and also extends a moratorium uh, on people who are renting and provides protection for people who are on a mortgage so that people can have a safe, decent, affordable place to live right now. Uh, on top of that, we need to ensure that we do all of the other things that were listed there, you know, uh, unemployment insurance, um, providing aid to local and state governments that are at the breaking point right now. And the problem is that Mitch McConnell and his buddies uh, in the Senate are so disconnected from the everyday lives of people, whether, whether those Americans are Republicans, Democrats, independents, in red states, blue states. Mitch McConnell is so disconnected from everyday people that he feels no impetus, you know, like, you know, just go through the holiday season, go into the new year, let people fall off this cliff, and he doesn't want to budge. We need to change that. To say nothing of the delay where even if they are able to come to an agreement, you and I know there's going to be a delay in actually getting relief to these people. So we've almost come to the point where there is going to be some gap regardless of how this gets rolled out. I want to play you some sound from Congressman Pramila Jayapal on COVID relief. Take a listen. I don't call them stimulus checks, Hallie. I call them survival checks. Families are getting kicked out of their homes. They can't put food on the table and they need money to be able to do that. This is a bipartisan issue because families are struggling. And Mitch McConnell mm. and the mm. Trump White House is not, uh, you know, is refusing to acknowledge the scale of the crisis we face. I wonder how you think about those checks, Secretary, right? Because in addition to what we just heard there from the Congresswoman, we were also talking with Austin Goolsby last week, and he was talking about the fact that there is going to be a need for stimulus, but we can't even have a conversation about stimulus until you both get this virus under control and begin to stabilize this economic situation. How does Congress need to be thinking about these checks? They need to very much think of these in terms of the survival uh, of people so that uh, folks are able to just get by. Like, I'll give you a very good, precise example of this, Alicia. Um, we have 12 million folks out there who, on average, are behind in rent by $5,800. So even if you said, OK, you can't get evicted, you know, for the next month um, and you're going to be able to stay in place, as soon as that eviction moratorium runs out, it could run out at the end of the year if Senate Republicans don't do anything. Right away, you're going to have landlords all across America that are saying, OK, where's my $5,800? And folks obviously don't have that money. They're going to get sent to court, uh, and they're going to be out on the street. So we need to be thinking about this uh, holistically. We need to be thinking about it in terms of providing a means of survival for families right now, and then easing families and our overall economy into a time in 2021 when the vaccine has already taken hold, when we don't have to, to you know, worry about people getting infected, when businesses are more up and running and providing jobs again. But until then, um, we this is not a luxury, it is a necessity, it is a dire emergency, and they need to summon, these Republicans need to summon some of that will that they were able to summon for the CARES Act about eight months ago. I do want to ask you about your recent trip to Georgia to campaign for the Democratic candidates. You did a TikTok with John Ossoff. Tell me about what you heard from voters down there. You know, I talked to some small business owners down there, and they told a consistent story, which was that uh, this pandemic has rocked uh, their ability to do business. 
Uh, one of them said that uh, their business was only at about 50 percent of what it used to be. Another one said 70 percent. One of them said they used to have four employees. Now it was just them and one family member that were working the business. Uh, talk to folks who are worried about getting evicted. Uh, there is a real concern out there. And the reason that I went to Georgia is because uh, Mitch McConnell has shown us that he's so disconnected from everyday Americans that if we continue to give him the keys to the Senate by keeping Purdue and Leffler there, nothing is going to get done, even in the next administration, to help people who need it on rent, on unemployment insurance, on just the things to get by. So people need to get out to vote in Georgia. And we have two fantastic candidates in uh, Reverend Warnock and John Ossoff. Uh, you know, it looks good. There's a lot of enthusiasm because people know that the stakes are so high. All right, Secretary Julian Castro, thank you as always. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.